We hear a lot about renewable sources of energy, like wind, solar and hydro. But in reality, with our population going up to 12 billion in the next century, these are not real solutions. Michelle Labirge is very close to cracking the code to fusion, a clean and sustainable source of energy that will revolutionize the way we power our cities. First, I would like to know about you. Tell me about yourself. Were you always innovative? Well, I was a nerd, you know, like uh, most kids were playing baseball. I was in my garage building a go-kart or something, you know. And at school, I was the nerd. I was good at math and physics, and I was no good at English and literature. And I always kind of liked being a little bit different than the other people. When I did my PhD, I used to work on fusion. And I could see that the energy situation on this planet not not going well. We need a new source of power, global warming, pollution. Uh, this was pretty bad. So I had enough money in my pocket to quit my job. My wife was not very impressed with this thing. <laughs> but I quit my job and I started a fusion company. Now, this is totally insane because fusion is very, very hot. And I found a way of doing fusion, which is called magnetized target fusion, which is different than the way that the big billions of dollar people that are working on fusion. And I looked at that and you say, and you know what, this, this could work. So we should try to put a bit of energy towards that. And with that, I built a small machine about this much diameter. I built that with one part-time engineer. And finally, we managed to make this machine to reduce a little bit of fusion. And then we build the company that we have now, and hopefully we'll succeed in doing fusion. So yes. what is fusion? And fission, what's the difference? Ah, very good question. So in fission, which is the big nuclear power plant that exists today, they take uranium, which is a very, very big nucleus. You throw a neutron at it, it becomes unstable and breaks in two parts. Mm -hmm. And when it breaks in two parts, it makes a lot of energy that comes out of some neutrons also. But the two parts that you break, they're all over the element uh, table. And many of those elements are radioactive. Fusion is a different thing. Is you take two small nucleus, typically hydrogen isotopes, and you stick them together and it makes helium. So the, the result of the reaction is helium. Now, it also produces a neutron, and the neutron goes and gets the energy out. However, the neutron, when it hits different material, could produce some radioactive material, but it's short-lived. And if you choose your material carefully, it's pretty safe radioactive uh, material. So it's a very, very good solution, but it's extremely hard to do. The difficulty of it is, is immense because those two nucleus, they're both electrically charged positive, and when they go by each other, they repel and they don't fuse. So in order to fuse, you have to throw them with enough speed so they touch and fuse. But speed in a gas is the temperature. So the temperature required for fusion is 150 million degrees C. So it's this, this is the temperature in the center of the sun, because it's the same reaction as the sun. So you have to reproduce in the lab the temperature in the middle of the sun, and that's hard. Do you think in the future fusion might become the dominant source of energy? I believe so. Like, actually, most scientists, when they look at all this, they, the conclusion is fusion will run this planet. Mm -hmm. Where we don't agree in is when. <laughs> is it a short time thing or is it a long time thing and how much time? Like the, the official fusion community, is they put the fusion on the grid in like uh, 2060 or something, which is quite long. We want to make that more like a decade or something. So right now, 80% of the energy on this planet is produced by burning fuel. However, people are understanding all the problem with burning fuel, so we are trying to look for alternatives. The two alternatives that are making the most noise and the most success is wind and solar. So wind and solar produce energy with no pollution, which is good. However, the energy produced by wind and solar vary, like when the wind blows and when it's sunny. And the demand, the amount of power required for the electricity at home and the cars and everything change. And if the demand and the supply don't follow, you've got a problem. We could have storage, but storage is very, very difficult. And I think storage will always be more expensive than making energy. Here we can produce energy out of a fuel that's very, very cheap, like the, the fusion fuel find in the sea, and we will be able to produce power at a cost, I think, which will be less than storage. And although wind and solar is very good, and it's going to get us maybe 10 or 20 percent of our power, we still need something that will produce base load ready power steadily in the future, and I think fusion is it. Also, in fusion, you put the fuel in the machine, you compress, you try to heat it up, you work really, really hard, and if something goes wrong, nothing happens. And if everything goes well, you have a bit of energy that comes out. So it would be a very good solution. Also, the fuel for fusion comes from the ocean. You can extract the fuel from the ocean at a very, very low cost, about one ten thousandth of a cent per kilowatt hour. 
Tell me about engineering of general yes. fusion. The way that fusion has been done the most is with the tokamak. In a tokamak, you put a couple of coil around it in the form of a donut. You make a big magnetic field. And the gas, when you heat it up, it becomes a plasma. The electron and the center, the nucleus, they become free. And because the gas is thin, the, the collision don't happen very often. So it doesn't produce very much energy. So what we want to do is we want to take this magnetized plasma and compress it. And what we do is we want to compress it with those pistons here. Now, what you don't see it here, but we, you saw it next door, is those big cone machine that will inject a plasma inside of this sphere. And then all the piston will squash the plasma. And when you squeeze the plasma, it gets denser and it gets hotter. And because it's dense, the fusion reaction happens much faster because the collision with the atom happens mm -hmm. more often in a dense gas. And then that will make a flash of neutron. It will be absorbed by the big tank and it'll get hot. And then we're going to bake some uh, steam and then we're going to run a turbine and make electricity. Mm -hmm. A full-size machine, how much power is it going to produce in terms of how many houses can be provided with electricity? Okay, the full-size machine will produce about 100 megawatt. Now, Vancouver here, which is about uh, maybe 3 million people, runs on about 1 gigawatt. So it's one-tenth of Vancouver per machine, 300,000 people per power plant of about 100 megawatt. While we don't have fusion and any kind of like alternative sources of power and we still pollute and there's nothing yes. we can do. Is there anything you can advise in terms of keeping the world cleaner, <laughs> nicer? Well, everybody can do his bit, his, his little bit, which is actually saving energy, I think. Saving power is what people can do. A lot of people complain about industry and progress. Like people, if there's a new power line going in their backyard, they will scream murder. If there's a pipeline to go to BC from Alberta, everybody's screaming murder. And they're screaming murder for power line and, and, and pipeline, but they want the light to go on when they turn on the switch. They want to drive their car around. People are very keen on wind and solar. They understand the problem that we need more energy, but nobody paid the slightest bit of attention to fusion. And although wind and solar is very good, and it's going to get us maybe 10 or 20% of our power, we still need something that will produce base load ready power steadily in the future. And I think fusion is it, but most people don't get that. Nobody knows about fusion, so it's difficult to sell because nobody have here hear about it. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for this interview. It was such a pleasure meeting you. Thank you.